Heating and ventilation is very important both in homes and office buildings. That's why we take the help of HVAC systems. Heating, ventilation and air conditioning systems function to maintain the comfort and safety of building occupants. In this module, we will learn about the fundamentals of HVACR systems. By the end of this module, you will be able to define HVACR, state the importance of HVACR, list the history of HVACR, identify the classification of air conditioning systems. HVACR stands for Heating, Ventilation, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration. The system is used to provide heating and cooling services to buildings. HVAC systems have become the required industry standard for construction of new buildings. HVACR industry manages indoor environments, designs, builds, installs, services, maintains, troubleshoots and repairs indoor comfort and cooling systems year-round. Let us next understand about each aspect beginning with heating. Heating is maintaining conditioned space at comfort levels where the temperature of surrounding is less than the room temperature or heating is the process of adding thermal energy to the conditioned space for the process of raising or maintaining the temperatures of the space. This picture depicts the heating process in a room. Now, let us discuss ventilation. Ventilation is the method of inducing fresh air in the conditioned space or it is the process of exchanging air between the outdoor and the indoor for diluting the gaseous contaminants in the air and improving or maintaining air quality its composition and freshness. Ventilation can be achieved either through natural ventilation or through mechanical ventilation. Natural ventilation is driven by natural draft like when you open a window. Mechanical ventilation can be achieved by using fans to draw air in from outside or to exhaust air from the space to outside. Air movement is to control the movement of the supplied air so that the inhabitants of the space do not feel discomfort. The image depicts ventilation of a room. Now, let us understand air conditioning. Air conditioning means achieving and maintaining certain desired conditions like temperature, humidity, cleanliness, pressure, etc. in a closed space. The conditions to be maintained are dictated by the need for which condition space is intended for or removing thermal energy from the space for the purpose of lowering and maintaining the temperature and the properties of air. The image depicts air conditioning in a closed area by a split unit and by central air conditioning unit. The image depicts air conditioning by central air conditioning units. Now, let's move on to refrigeration. Refrigeration is the science of producing and maintaining temperature in a product or space which is lower than that of the surroundings. Refrigeration is achieved by removing heat at a low temperature level and rejecting at a relatively high temperature level. By its nature, heat flows from body at a high temperature to another at a lower temperature. It requires external energy to make the heat flow from a lower temperature to a higher temperature level. The image shows a common refrigerator and a cold room with refrigeration. Now, let's understand the objective of HVAC. The objective of HVAC is to control the temperature of air inside the designated 
air conditioned space along with the control of other important conditions like moisture filtration of air containment of airborne particles supply of fresh air for control of oxygen and carbon dioxide levels in the air conditioned space and finally control of the movement of air or draught all these factors comprise of a successful hvac system by installation of hvac is system we can maintain internal conditions of the space irrespective of ambient conditions sometimes we need air conditioning system while in some conditions having a heater would suit better we need hvac system to maintain cooling heating and proper ventilation now let's look at the history and timelines of air conditioning and refrigeration in 1755 william skullen had invented the evaporative cooling method in 1805 oliver evan invented closed cycle refrigeration system in 1835 jacob perkins introduced vapor compression refrigeration system which is run by ethyl ether and air in 1850 alexander twining introduced vcr system by using ether carbon dioxide as a refrigerant in 1856 james harrison's introduced vcr which runs on ether alcohols and ammonia in 1864 charles teller refrigeration which runs by dimethyl ether in 1874 ral pictet introduced the first sulfur dioxide refrigeration system it runs for almost 20 years in 1877 carl wandlind introduced first ammonia based refrigeration system in 1885 franz wind hausen brought first carbon dioxide based refrigeration air conditioning unit in 1891 eastman kodak installed the first system in new york for storage of photographic films in 1894 first domestic system was installed in hamburg in 1902 in new york stock exchange one of the first comfort cooling system was developed in 1904 wills h carrier invented a central cooling system with invention of air washers in 1920 copland and edward introduced domestic refrigerators in 1922 Wills Carrier developed a centrifugal compressor cooling system with low conventional high efficiency refrigeration and air conditioning machine. In 1925, first industrial use of dry ice was made. In 1931, refrigerant R12 was developed by Thomas Midgley and C F Kettering. In 1933 the Freon group of refrigerants were introduced to revolutionize the refrigeration and air conditioning industry. In 1939 Copland introduced the first successful semi-hermetic field serviceable compressor. In 1974 professors Roland and Molina presented the ozone theory stating that CFCs were depleting the ozone layer in 1985 stratospheric ozone hole was discovered in 1987 industrialized countries including australia signed the montreal protocol for the reduction of cfc refrigerants in 1990 london signs amendments to reevaluate the world's production of CFCs and new HCFC refrigerants R123 and R134A were introduced in the refrigeration industry In 1992 R404A as a replacement for R502 In 1992 Copenhagen signs amendments to increase the percentage of phase out of CFCs 
in 1997, Kyoto Protocol was introduced and was intended to reduce worldwide global warming gas emission. The greenhouse effect or global warming had become a major environmental issue by now. In 1998 to 2005, R410A, an efficient and environment-friendly HFC-based refrigerant, a blend of residential and light applications was introduced with scroll compressor for greater efficiency. In 2005, the industry is now so diverse and technologically advanced that it is uncommon for the modern technician to be conversant in all areas of the industry. It has become necessary to specialize in one of the many sectors, whether it be installation, commissioning or servicing. It is to be further decided whether to perform this specialization in the domestic, industrial, commercial and transport area of refrigeration and air conditioning. Now let's identify a few pioneers of this industry. Some of the pioneers of HVAC are Robert Boyle, Sadi Carnot, John Dalton, James Watt, Benjamin, Franklin, John Gorey, Lord Kelvin, Ferdinand Kerr, Wills Carrier, Thomas Medigley. The image shows the New York Stock Exchange, the world's first air-conditioned building located in New York, America. Now, let's see who is the father of this invention. Willis H. Carrier is known as the father of air conditioning system. He has contributed tremendously towards the invention and success in air conditioning system. Now, let's move on to understand the classification of air conditioning systems. Air conditioning systems are classified according to purpose, comfort air conditioning system, industrial air conditioning system, according to season of the year, winter air conditioning system, summer air conditioning system, year-round air conditioning system, unitary air conditioning system, central air conditioning system. Now, let's understand each of these. The above chart shows the classification of air conditioning system according to their purpose. They are classified in two types, comfort air conditioning, which includes refrigeration in residential and commercial buildings and industrial air conditioning, which includes refrigeration in industries. Now, let's understand the classification based on the season of the year. Air conditioning is classified into winter air conditioning and summer air conditioning based on the season of the year. In winter air conditioning system or WACS, the air is preheated by heating coil and it is accomplished by humidification process. The process involved in WAC system is as follows. The air entering in will be preheated at the preheater. Preheated air undergoes humidification by humidifier or air washers. Reheating of humidified air in reheater. In summer air conditioning or SAC system, the air is cooled and dehumidified by cooling coil. Process involved in SAC system is as follows. The air entering in is collectively passed on through the filters. After filtration, the mixed air passes on to the heating coil where the hot water is circulating in the coil. This air is again passed on to low-level heating coil. That cooled and dehumidified air will be sent to the space meant to be air-conditioned. Now let's understand the classification of year-around air conditioning system. A year-around air conditioning system is a combination of both winter and summer air conditioning system. The air entering in is collectively passed on to the cooling coil. 
cooled air undergoes humidification process by humidifier. This will be again passed on to low level heating coil. That cooled and humidified air will be sent to conditioned spaces. Now, let's understand the classification of unitary systems. The unitary air conditioning system is an assembled air conditioning system which is nearer to air conditioned spaces. These are all also called as self-contained units of small capacities. Examples, window units, split units, tower units, package units, rooftop units, etc. Now let's understand the central air conditioning system. The central air conditioning systems are installed for large cooling capacities. Usually we get this type of system by installing BRF or VRV or chillers etc. Now let's look at a table that compares each system. Let's quickly recap the key points of this module. In this module we have learned that HVACR stands for heating, ventilation, air conditioning and refrigeration. Heating is maintaining conditioned space at comfort levels where the temperature of surrounding is less than the room temperature. Ventilation is the method of inducing fresh air in the conditioned space. Ventilation can be achieved either through natural ventilation or through mechanical ventilation. Let's quickly recap the key points of this module. In this module, we have learned that HVACR stands for heating, ventilation, air conditioning and refrigeration. Heating is maintaining conditioned space at comfort levels where the temperature of surrounding is less than the room temperature. Ventilation is the method of inducing fresh air in the conditioned space. Ventilation can be achieved either through natural ventilation or through mechanical ventilation. Air conditioning means achieving and maintaining certain desired conditions like temperature, humidity, cleanliness, pressure, etc. in a closed space. Willis H. Carrier is known as the father of air conditioning system. Air conditioning systems are classified according to purpose, according to season of the year, year-round air conditioning system, unitary air conditioning system, central air conditioning system.